You have entered the command zone, your destination for all aspects of Elder Dragon Highlander. Enjoy your stay. Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Command Zone Podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Weeks, and today we have a special guest host. It's Murph. Hello. I don't know if I'm a very special guest. You're very special, <laughs> a very Murph. special guest. That, that makes me feel so nice inside. Merv uh, did the budget upgrade guide. Well, a slightly different, a bigger budget uh, upgrade guide yes. <laughs> for the Riders of Rohan, Lord of the Rings precon. It is just sky, which means it is blue, white, and red. It's humans. It rules. Oh, yes, it does. I love this deck. Yeah. So in this episode, we're going to break down what's inside the deck. What are the commanders? What are the uh, categories of cards? We're going to talk about the financial value of the cards in the deck. And then we are going to take... 10 cards out and replace them with 10 better, fresher, sicker cards uh, so that your deck is as tuned and as functional as it can possibly be when you take it to your next game night. Uh, but before we get into it, if you hear any cards that you're excited about in this episode, please go straight to cardkingdom.com slash command and pick up all of these sweet Lord of the Rings precons. I am personally most excited about the precons i know that makes sense because i'm a commander content creator mm -hmm. but they're awesome and all of the art is lord of the rings so if you haven't just gone through the spoilers or you haven't gone through uh, all of the lord of the rings cards do a browse on card kingdom they display all of the different versions all of the ring printings of all of the new cards um and plus they have great deals on the sealed product itself plus when you buy cards at card kingdom they all come to you in one safe professionally packaged container. Uh, so you can always trust that your cards are going to show up when you expect them and they're going to be safe when they get there. Plus they have great customer service. So if there is an issue with your order, you can go straight to Card Kingdom and they will get it resolved. Again, you can support the show and pick up the magic cards we know you're going to buy at cardkingdom.com slash command. You can also support the show by going over to ultrapro.com slash command. Who, they have some of the best magic accessories in the business. They've got card sleeves and play mats and deck boxes and dice and plushies, uh, wall scrolls. I'm going to keep listing so the editors keep having to find things to put <laughs> on the screen. I didn't know they had uh, plushies. They I'll be do. Honest. Really? They've got like little toys and stuff. That's adorable. It's fun. <laughs> Uh, especially if you're ex as excited about Lord of the Rings as I am. They have a whole suite of Lord of the Rings play mats. These are, are like, I have the Eowyn one, which is from this precon. Uh, I believe you have the fancy new Aragorn, oh, who is yeah. completely busted. Oh, yeah. Uh, you got to go to ultrapro.com and check out all of their Lord of the Rings merch because it's going to be so cool. Plus, you know, you've always dreamed of having Sauron on your play mat while be playing the villain at your game night, you know? That's too fun uh and you can get all of that sweet sweet stuff at ultrapro.com slash command the other way that you can support the show is directly at patreon.com slash command zone uh our patreons literally make the show possible you guys make the show better and better the more people that we have supporting the show the cooler stuff that we can make for you plus you get access to extra turns and game nights early mm -hmm. you get to watch turn talks which are super fun discussions after every extra turns where we talk about what would happen if we had drawn one more card i, I love those discussions they're had, so much fun to be yeah. like all right sit down after the game and do a talk about Literally everything that happened in the game. It's, yeah. it's a ton of fun. Turn Talks is a blast. Plus, it's like it's just unedited, straight talk from, um, hopefully, some of your play favorite players in this game. Uh, plus, we shout out one lucky patron every podcast episode. And this one's dedicated to, to Joseph, Joseph Vespucci. Vespucci. Joseph, you rock. You rock, Joseph. Thanks a lot. Thanks for supporting the show. All right, let's get into it. This Precon rules. It really does. Okay. It is the Riders of Rohan. The Riders of Rohan Precon. So yes. we have two potential commanders that we could run. So let's go over the face commander first of all. Mm -hmm. So first up, we got Eowyn Shield Maiden. Mm -hmm. It's two and a just guy, so a total of five mana. Uh, it's got first strike. It's a 5-4. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if another human entered the battlefield under your control this turn, create two 2-2 two -two red human knight creature tokens with trample and haste. Then, if you control six or more humans, draw a card. So that's a lot of text to say, play a human on your turn, and at the beginning of combat, you'll get two two twos, and maybe draw a card. Yeah, I mean, this is a lot of pressure. Yes. Like this, <laughs> two two twos with trample and haste. So like yeah. they'll be able to attack, 
no and matter it, what during that it turn. It doesn't say another non-token human. Yeah. Like, if, if you have a token human enter for any reason, you still get those two twos. Exactly. There are many ways to make human tokens mm. in this world, and... As it turns out, those will be able to trigger this. Mm -hmm. uh, it only happens once a turn unless you're getting extra combats or anything like that. But for the most part, the amount of value that this gets is pretty dang good. And then yeah. being able to draw a card on top of it, if your engine is working the way it's supposed to, it's pretty good. I really like that extra card draw on there because you do really want to trigger this every turn that Eowyn's on the battlefield. Yeah. So you really need to keep drawing humans to keep triggering Eowyn to exactly. keep going wide. Uh, so having a little bit of card draw in addition to the tokens means you're not committing all of your cards to the board and dying to a board wipe, which exactly. is often the case in this kind of deck. Like it will... Like it wants you to commit to the board mm -hmm. so that you can get that payoff, but the payoff means that if your board does get wiped, it's not as bad. Right. You so still it, have cards in your Exactly. Hand. It wants to keep yeah. you being aggressive. Mm -hmm. And the secondary commander, there are just two legendary creatures that can be your commander in this precon. It is Aragorn, King of Gondor. He is one and Jeskai, so four altogether for a human noble with vigilance and lifelink. He's a 4-4. Four, four. And when Aragorn enters the battlefield, you become the monarch. Makes sense. He's the king. Mm -hmm. uh, and whenever Aragorn attacks, up to one target creature can't block this turn. If you're the monarch, creatures can't block this turn. Yeah, so that is pretty dang good. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I mean, geez. <laughs> yeah, so Aragorn definitely wants to go in a similar style mm. as Eowyn, which is good because they're both in the same deck. Mm -hmm. uh, but this one focuses a little bit more on the monarch aspect of things and being able to keep that. Because mm -hmm. if you can keep that, my oh my is the payoff totally worth it right uh, because you'll be able to get through damage basically no matter what because your opponents will not be able to block mm -hmm. and aragorn having vigilance to make sure that he stays untapped to hopefully dissuade people from attacking you to get the monarch is also really really good value Right. I, it feels like Eowyn is very, uh, is leaning forward. Mm -hmm. It's a very aggressive deck. It wants to commit more to the board and go wide. Yeah. Where Aragorn wants to land some like big things, maybe with combat damage triggers that are both aggressive and also defensive. Yeah, definitely. Because you do want to protect that monarch. Absolutely. It's, uh, it, it's interesting. I, yeah. I, I think it's a, I think it's a cool card, but it's, this is a monarch deck. This is a human deck. Yeah. And the I question mean, is sort of what's in the box. Yeah. Aragorn definitely wants to attack. Like, otherwise the not being able to block isn't really doing much for you. Right. But it does require a possibly more specialized type of build. Yeah. I think vigilance is extremely important. Yeah. In a deck, in a deck like this. It's pretty so good. It's funny. They're, they read very similar, but I do think that there are some slight differences. Yeah, definitely. Um, in order to decide who should be the lead singer of this deck, we're going to take a closer look at the 99. We're yeah. going to look at what is actually in the box that you would be buying or you would be upgrading. Uh, so we're going to break down the... Stats. 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 I forgot to do the juju ju ju part. You forgot the juju okay. ju 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 You already started it. I was like, oh man. You can't jump in <laughs> I on can't the juju. You jump in on the juju. <laughs> ju <laughs> All, right. All right. So, yeah. deck stats. We got about nine or so pieces of ramp. Okay. Pretty good. About where we want to be. Mm -hmm. uh, 12 to 13 ish pieces of card draw. This is a weird stat. Yeah. So, this is 12.13 pieces of card draw. Yeah. Oh, wait, that's not a dash. That, that's nope, a point. It is a point. <laughs> and I will tell you why, Murph. <laughs> I gathered the, stat, the statistics <laughs> for this. <laughs> Uh, and it's because there's a lot of cards in this deck that take the monarch. Mm, I see. And it felt like it does give you cards, but mm -hmm. it's conditional. And yeah. if you're already the monarch, that card doesn't actually do anything. Yeah, that's super interesting. So I counted them as a third of a card. Okay. And then I think there's one of them that counts as half. I don't remember exactly what that is. Yeah. Uh, but I, the monarch cards I counted sort of carefully, which mm -hmm. means that there's just a ton of monarch cards in this deck in addition to actual card advantage that you can rely on. So that's what that 12.13 number comes from. <laughs> Got it. So <laughs> we do have a reasonable amount of card draw in it yeah. no matter what. Whether yeah. or not you count the monarch cards, like... This We're basically, doing okay. basically means plenty. Yes. Yeah. We got about 14 
targeted interaction cards. Mm. It's pretty high. They've been doing it pretty high uh, mm -hmm. for the past couple of years. So yeah. that seems about what we expect from these pre-cons. Mm -hmm. um, two to three board wipes, 2.5-ish. Yeah. Ish. <laughs> this is an interesting one. Yeah. Um, the 0.5 stands out, obviously. Um, I There is a card in the deck that goads everything and makes it so creatures can't block. Yes. And it is not exactly a board wipe. Mm -hmm. But in an aggressive deck, it clears the way. It very much is, is yeah. similar to like Disrupt Decorum, where right. it's not exactly a board wipe, but it kind of does what you want right. anyway, which is so not be attacked, get everybody else to... It makes the board damage. not your problem. Yes. So it doesn't count exactly as a board wipe, but I do think it falls into this category. So yeah. I included it as half a card. Yeah. It is a deals with the board. Yeah. Kind of. <laughs> kind of. For <laughs> a second. Thing. Yeah. It's fine. Uh, we've got 38 lands. Which is typical for the rest of these precons. Yep. Th 38 is across the board, what they've done. Yep. Uh, and then we have about 10 things that make tokens. Mm -hmm. uh, like we said, especially with Aowen, uh, you'll still be able to trigger the ability even if you make tokens. So tokens are pretty darn good. The deck probably is feeling like it kind of wants to go wide. Mm -hmm. um, similarly, we've got 11 anthems, 11 yeah. anthem effects. So that really suggests that we're going high. wide. 11's Definitely. a lot. Yeah. It means that we want a lot of bodies on the board. So those tokens numbers really do make sense. Yeah. You're not trying to put three creatures onto the board and then have 11 anthems in your deck. Like that's not indicative of what the deck's trying to do. It wants right. to go super wide. You want 10 tokens or 10 creatures on the battlefield, play a couple anthems, but a bing, but a boom, do lots of damage. Yeah, that is uh, Eowyn's catchphrase. Yeah, <laughs> but a bing, but a bing, but a boom. That's what she said, actually. <laughs> Don't she think killed so. Sauron. <laughs> Not... I think so. It said it in the books. Um, <laughs> it's also worth noting that the tokens that Eowyn makes have trample. Yeah. So those, so those anthem effects actually are quite powerful with your commander. Yeah, because that buff will be extra damage that goes through basically right. no matter whether they block or not. Yeah. Like it's going to do something. Mm -hmm. So those anthems, you're right, can be very, very powerful. Very good. Yeah. Uh, we've got about four forms of evasion, which is low, but it feels like, again, this deck wants to be low to the ground and just like overwhelm you with the amount of stuff or rather than mm. try to get over you or yeah. sneak through damage. This evasion number, I think, is largely to do with Monarch stuff. Yes. Um, where it really wants to make sure you're pressuring damage and making sure you can take the Monarch back. Mm -hmm. uh, that number is quite low and, it, and it's on similar cards to what I mentioned before, yes. where it goes everything and things can't block or it you know it gives your board some, some form of evasion. So it's for the whole board rather than specifically. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So uh, given the stats of the deck and and just kind of looking through, uh, the deck definitely wants to go wide and it wants to have a lot of creatures, basically as many as possible. Mm -hmm. So I feel like between these two commanders, uh, Eowyn and Aragorn, mm -hmm. I feel like Eowyn does a much better job at pushing that agenda, getting that game plan going forward faster and better because mm -hmm. Aragorn is still good in the deck in that it can make it so that your opponents can't block. Mm -hmm. But in order to build the board most effectively, I think Aowen is just a much better commander for doing so. Yeah, I agree here. And we're, we're not picking necessarily what the better card is. We're picking the best mm -hmm. commander for the box yeah. and for this upgrade. Yeah. So we can really zero in our focus on one of the commanders. So typically when they when they make a precon, there's multiple face commanders and they kind of build in two loose directions. Yes. And the face commander tends to get a little bit more focus, but it's not always the case. Sometimes it's the backup commander that's actually better supported. Um, and in this case... I do think they built much more towards Eowyn yes. than towards Aragorn. Now, that being said, if somebody rolled up to an LGS and just had this precon out of the box and they were running Aragorn as the commander, I would not be like, oh, man, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. No, no. Aragorn is totally a pretty good card. Yeah. Very reasonable to run as a commander. I just feel like Eowyn's a little bit more better suited. Yeah. I will say... Uh, nobody is happier than Eowyn that she and Aragorn are, <laughs> are at the helm of this deck together. Exactly. I'm sure Aragorn is not as happy. It's <laughs> like, where is Arwen? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've talked about uh, the cards that are in the deck. We want to talk about the financial value of the product to make sure that when you are buying this deck from wherever you get your, your game store or online or cardkingdom.com slash command, um, <laughs> you're getting the bang for your buck that you deserve when you open a product like this. Uh, there are a number of caveats about this product in particular. It has a higher shelf price yes. 
yeah. than many precons of the past, which typically are around $40, $45. This one is closer to $55. I've seen it as high as $60 and as low as $50. Mm -hmm. um, things will settle. Uh, we we're recording this fairly early, so prices haven't quite settled because we don't know exactly yeah, what's in the box We're just going to assume yet. it's a, around $55 or I would so say for, roughly for $55, which is about $10 more than um, precons typically are. Yeah. Um, we are also taking these precon numbers before the deck comes out. Uh, so these numbers will change. Basically what the values of the, the value of the reprints give us is a comparison, uh, between this deck and decks of the past, yeah. well, uh, we'll, which were taken at similar times yeah. before, before the precons, the, the reprints were announced. Yeah. We'll always look at these precons before the precons actually are revealed and hit the market, mm -hmm. uh, because that way we can get a good idea of, all right, base level, where were these prices before this got revealed? Mm -hmm. And uh, because usually they'll, hopefully at the very least drop the price of some of these cards yeah that's uh, the hope. due to the reprint yeah that that is the hope but <laughs> uh who knows one final caveat uh there are only 54 reprints in this deck because they have printed more lord of the rings cards yeah uh so many of them are from the main set or they are specifically for this box only 54 of them are 54 cards are included in the reprint value whereas in previous precons it's usually closer to 70 um the, I have pulled a couple of precons that are closer to like 60 reprints. So mm -hmm. the value is more comparable in terms of number of cards that we're comparing. Um, and obviously we can't tell you the price of the new cards because they, they are not out just yet. They are unpriced. So they are yeah, priceless. Th they, they do have value. We just don't know what they are. Yeah. So <laughs> have fun with the cards. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, well, let's get it. Let's. What's the number? We're going to say the total reprint value of this deck is. It is $128.75. Dang. Yeah, that's pretty high compared to These most of the ones. These are so yeah. good. I'm so happy with the reprint value. Yeah. Of decks. Generally speaking, like at least for me, if the reprint value is above $100, I'm happy. Yeah. Right. If it's below that, I'm like, eh, it's not bad, but I feel like they could have done a little bit better. Right. So at $128 especially given the fact that there are more new cards than reprints. Yeah, there's only 54 reprints. Yeah. So it's $128 divided among fewer cards than normal. Exactly. And most of the stuff, if not all of this stuff, I believe, has new art. Yeah. And so you'll be getting a special version of whatever those reprints are. So I think at $128, right. uh, that's that's plenty good value for me. Right. I don't know so about like, you, Rachel. <laughs> yeah, like the regular versions of these cards are worth $128. Yes. And these are special versions. I know. Lord of the Rings so cool. versions. Uh, we are going to compare them to some decks of the past. Like I said, these are decks that have roughly 60 reprint cards in their total average reprint value. So Commander 2020, Ikoria average reprint value was around $96. 2021 in Strixhaven, average reprint value was about $88. Forgotten Realms was around $115. And Forgotten Realms was a great set. Love we were that. very happy with the $115 price tag. And that, again, is on a 40 ish dollar box. And Kamigawa Indian Dynasty had a similar number of reprints in the box, but it's sort of famously low in terms of reprint value. And that average was about $73. So as you can see, 128 is great. We're super happy with that Very number happy. and uh, the the different art is makes it all the more exciting. Yeah. All right. Let's get into the notable reprints. What are the cards that we're I make up this $128 total reprint value? Uh, we're only going to talk about the cards over $2 in the box. We're not going to talk about every single reprint because you're not probably not super excited about the ones under $2. You could be. We don't judge. You could be. <laughs> but we're not going to talk about it. <laughs> but you can talk about that with your friends. Uh, there are seven cards in this deck that are $5 and or more. Uh, that is very nice. Lots. I like that a lot. Yeah. And this first one is a banger. Yeah. So we got Combat Celebrant. Huge. At $20. Yeah. Yeah. Really one of the most powerful humans. I believe it's only been printed the one time before in Ammon Catch. I think so. Yeah. It might have been, in, there might have been a list in there somewhere, but... Yeah, this thing has desperately needed a reprint. Very powerful card. And new uh, art. Brand new arts. Yeah. Combo enabler. Love it. Also great with Eowyn in the command zone. Happy Definitely. to see it. Definitely. Extra combats. Great. 
One of the anthem effects in one of the 11 anthem effects in the deck is the next reprint. It's $19.50. It is Door of Destinies. A uh, classic creature type uh, card. I- every time you cast a spell of a certain creature type, you, they get bigger and bigger and bigger. So it's a great finisher, especially for decks that want to keep casting. And this one was also almost twenty dollars at nineteen fifty or yeah, so. Insane. So glad to see a reprint for that one. Yep. Uh, another anthem effect is next at nine dollars and fifty cents. Shocked, it's this high again. It's yeah. shared animosity. Another one that cares about shared creature types. Uh, Vanquisher's Banner still at nine dollars after its most recent reprint. Yep. Uh, gr- I'm glad that they are printing this multiple times. This card should be affordable, as should this next one. It's Harold's Horn mm-hmm. is still at seven dollars despite For a some number reason. of reprints <laughs> and not being that good. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. It's <laughs> fine. <laughs> We're getting completely sidetracked here, I'm sorry. but I totally agree with it's you. Not- I have cut Harold's Horn from so many tribal decks because I'm like, it's just fine at three mana. Like, yeah. it reduces things and it hits, like, not even half the time I think off the top of your deck. Yeah. I think if this it's card not draws you a good. card, you're like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> It usually right. happens like once or twice before it's it gets fine. blown up. Uh, all right. The next one is a $5.50 reprint. Despite many reprints, it is Supreme Verdict. Mm-hmm. And finally, Talisman of Progress sitting at $5. This Please. is the white and blue talisman. <laughs> Print talismans into the ground. Keep yeah. them cheap. Uh, we like to see this reprint. We want to see more of them. It shouldn't be above $5. Uh, we're going to blast through these $2 to $5 reprints. They're exciting, yep. uh, but you know, you know, you love them. Yeah. So we got Thought Vessel, mm-hmm. Glacial Fortress. Throne of the High City, that's the Monarch Lands, yep. Secluded Courtyard, Path to Exile, always a classic, Sulphur Falls, Weathered Wayfair, Palace Jailer, and Soul Ring is still above $2. He refused. <laughs> I will not be a budget option. <laughs> I'm trying to get it below $2. Yeah, I mean, this particular Soul Ring is super sweet. Also uh, so it's worth $2.25. <laughs> Easily. Uh <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we've talked about the the financial value of, of these cards in the deck. Mm-hmm. There are some very exciting cards. We're very happy with this reprint value, but let's talk about the best cards mechanically in the deck. These are the ones that are, when they're in your hand, you're like, oh, my deck is humming. It's yeah. doing exactly what I want. Yeah, so... One of the best cards in the deck, uh, I feel, is Baragond of the Guard. It's three mm-hmm. and a white for a 3-3. Three, three. Legendary creature, human. Uh, when it or another human enters the battlefield under your control, creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and gain vigilance until end of turn. Mm. This yeah. card is a menace with your commander. Yes, because your commander doesn't say none token, so yeah. this entering is will trigger the commander, which is always good, Yeah, as with any humans. Um and it gives plus one, plus one, and vigilance to everything. For so, each creature, for each human yes, that entered. for each human that entered. So, so commander makes tokens. Yeah. Any other humans that you play during that turn, uh, it'll buff the creatures, give them vigilance so that you will not, hopefully, get hit on the crackback. Mm. You can just attack with huge humans with impunity. It's like, it's nuts. And, yeah, you're making tokens with Trample. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, Trample. Trample, like the, too. These tutus have Trample. <laughs> yeah. So all you need is a so, couple humans, buff this thing up. Yeah. And oh, a lot of damage. Five and fives with Trample are so much scarier than tutus with Trample. It's also, like, Vigilance is so frustrating. Yeah. Because you're like, you just hit me for so much, and I can't get back still. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's like, oh, I don't even have to think about it. I'll just, I'll just attack you with this. Yeah, it makes your attacks free, which you really want. Yeah. Uh, and this next one's great as well. And similar. Yeah, it's uh, Theoden, King of Rohan, one red and whites. Uh, when it or another human enters the battlefield under your control, target creature gains double strike until end of turn. So if you compare these two together, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we are in good <laughs> shape. <laughs> Give all your humans double strike, make sure they're buffed up and have vigilance, and just keep dumping humans out, and I don't think you can lose. Like, there's no way, right? Unless somebody finds a board wipe. This, like, with all of these yeah. things together, it does sort of get sliversy. Yeah. Which is what every creature type sort of dreams to be mm-hmm. in a tribal ses- setting is and now we've got double strike and vigilance and trample and your commander has first strikes might as well give her double strike might it's as well very powerful uh it seems like this deck can do a ton of damage and we are going to do some upgrades to make sure it can do even more oh yeah but first we're gonna have a quick word from our sponsors citizens of dominaria i am liberator urza's battlethopter prepare to be liberated from hunger 
Factor is here to free you with delicious, ready-to-eat meals delivered straight to your door. Factor's fresh, never-frozen meals require a mere two minutes to prepare, leaving you liberated to enjoy the summer. Annoying trips to the grocery store? Liberated! Long cook times and cleanup? Liberated! Overpriced takeout and delivery? Liberated! They offer over 34 different delectable choices each week with options like keto and calorie smart to optimize your fuel intake. My favorite is the barbecue pork sloppy joe. It gives me the energy I need to liberate. In fact, liberating you has drained my energy, preparing to receive sloppy joe. Yum. Yum. Delicious. Yum. Head to factormeals.com slash command50 and use code command50 to get 50% off your first box. That's code command50 at factormeals.com slash command50 to get 50% off your first box. Uh, okay, my turn. What is it, turn 20? Uh, oh, okay, don't worry. I think I can finally win. Even after this cyclonic rift? What? <laughs> <laughs> What? I'm still feeling good. Thanks to Liquid IV, I'm always ready for the long game. Liquid IV is the number one powdered hydration brand in America. And it's not just for diehard athletes and marathon runners. Even if you're just going to work for the day or spending a game night with friends, proper hydration is essential. One stick of Liquid IV hydrates you two times faster than water alone. Plus, you get essential vitamins and great flavors like pina colada or strawberry. Best of all, Liquid IV is helping communities in need. They've donated over 39 million servings in 50 plus countries around the world. Hey, this is good. I think I could go a couple more turns. Yeah, we're all gonna mill out soon anyway. Ooh, even after this time twister? Oh, oh come, come on. on. Seriously? <laughs> what, that gets no win cards. <laughs> real people, real flavor, real hydrating. Grab your Liquid IV in bulk nationwide at Costco, or you can get 20% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use code COMMAND at checkout. That's 20% off anything when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code COMMAND at liquidiv.com. Hey everyone, we are super excited to announce that we are now sponsored by Architect. Architect is the perfect place to build and store decks online, whether you want to build from scratch or catalog your collection. Everything is easy and intuitive. It's got the same feeling as when you sit at the table with your cards laid out right in front of you. Then, once your deck is done and ready to go, their built-in play tester is a great tool to make sure your brews work as intended. And now that Architect has partnered with EDH Rec, they have all the resources and data they need to really refine and perfect the platform. So even if you've tried Architect in the past, it's definitely worth taking a new look right now. Just go to Architect.com and start brewing on the best deck builder out there. That's A-R-C-H-I-D-E-K-T.com. Welcome back, everybody. We are upgrading the Riders of Rohan Lord of the Rings pre-con deck. It is Jeskai, it is humans, and it is gonna do damage. Yes. Uh, before we get into specifically the 10 cards that we are going to add to this deck to put it in its peak fighting shape, let's just talk about what you wanted to do with these upgrades. Yeah. So the deck needs a few things. So thing number one is that the deck definitely wants to get Eowyn out as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Because it's a five mana commander, we probably want to be able to have two mana ramp uh, some stuff like that. Yeah, you also uh, want to be able to like cast Eowyn and cast a human. Yeah, so you want to be able to have enough mana in order to do so. So that being said, we added a couple of ramp pieces uh, to mm -hmm. help out with that. Uh, first one is, now don't don't kill me for this one, Deranged Assistant. I actually love this ad. So it's one in a blue, it's a one one, tap mill a card to add a colorless. So one thing that I look for whenever deck, when I'm deck building is I want stuff to have overlap. I want mm -hmm. things to be able to do one thing, but also be able to synergize with my commander. So mm -hmm. we're looking for ramp, specifically two mana ramp to make sure that we can get our commander out. Mm -hmm. But this card is also a human. So if you draw it late, it doesn't feel nearly as bad because then you can just trigger Eowyn, mm -hmm. get two two twos off of it, and we are in good shape. Cheap humans are a godsend af yes. after your commander is in play. I love this. Yeah, so it doesn't matter if you draw it early, then that's great. It helps ramp out your commander. If mm -hmm. you draw it late, that's great. Uh, it'll still trigger your commander. Yeah, and it's only 50 cents. Yep. 
Here we go. Next up. Uh, oh, we, I didn't mention it again. But oh. remember, this budget is fifty dollars. So oh, yes. there are some bangers to come. Um, we're trying. Like a, this one. We're trying. Yeah, we're trying a, <laughs> a bigger budget uh, for the Lord of the Rings upgrades. We know that people are really excited about these precons and want to be able to invest in them and make them as cool as possible. Yep. So we're doing a fifty dollars budget upgrade. If you like it, tell us. If you don't like us, tell us. We know you will. <laughs> All right. Where is? <laughs> Where, where is some of this budget going? Um, so similarly, along the lines of Ramp, uh, this is one that I was like, man, this seems a little boring, but it's just so good in the deck. So good. Professional face break. Oh, it's so good. This, this card is so dang good. <laughs> it's the three mana whenever uh, one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, create a treasure token, and you can sack the treasures to draw cards because why the heck not? But most importantly for this deck... Uh, it makes those treasures so that you can cast Eowyn earlier, mm -hmm. but also whenever you start getting that damage spread around, the face breaker, it, it is worded weirdly. It feels like if you deal damage with it, you should only make one, but if you got multiple opponents, then you will make multiple treasures. Uh, okay. And because Eowyn just gives free bodies so easily, you can very, very often get just free treasures without that much effort. Yeah, it, I mean, in this deck, it's also a threat it's a human, a human with menace two. so anything that you have that buffs it up a lot like our previous like mm, theoden like baragon or theoden why not well, let's theoden, just give, give it things double strike give it double strike it make more treasures. treasures so there's already a lot of synergy so that's built into this yeah. deck for professional facebreaker to shine mm. and it does just that yeah uh a lot of this card draw was Fairly conditional. We said there's 12.13 sources yes. of of card draw, and it's an aggro deck, so we want to make sure that we are continuing mm -hmm. to fuel our ant. Exactly. And spoiler alert a little bit for the removal. I, there were some removal some removal of the monarch cards, mm. so we want to make sure that we are able to replace those with other things that draw more cards. Yeah. So, Kindred Discovery. That's a three blue blue. When it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Whenever a creature you control of the chosen type enters the battlefield or attacks, draw a card. So this one, I thought initially, ah, oh, it's a little clunky because it's five mana. Your commander's five mana. Uh, you usually don't want to have too many cards that are the same mana cost as your commander. But this card is nuts. Like this card's yeah. insane. I every <laughs> it's when I'm deck building, it's like it's so expensive. I know. <laughs> and then when it's on the battlefield, you're like, oh my god. <laughs> I know. If if you can find a slot to like stick this card and land this card, mm -hmm. remember Eowyn will just make two two twos with haste. Mm -hmm. So when they enter, triggers. When they attack triggers yep they so, don't enter attacking or anything i yes. wanted to make sure that they didn't yep. enter you get four <laughs> triggers immediately so as, yeah so as long as you play a human which in and of itself is a card yeah <laughs> uh and you have aowen on the battlefield like base level you'll get five cards five that's nuts <laughs> very powerful very uh, good yeah we Insane. pay five mana for five cards we do we we do that any uh, day of the week and kindred discovery after its reprint is back up to 13 bucks so a good chunk of the budget went there yeah i think I, it's worth it I, I feel like it's very it's much worth it worth it um another card that i really like is mass appeal mm. this is two and a blue sorcery draw card for each human you control uh so this deck was super interesting in that it gives us blue yeah, I think a lot of people expected Rohan to be Boros, yeah. which it largely is. Yeah, so it's a very like Borosy game plan and a very Borosy shell. Mm -hmm. But I really like cards like Mass Appeal, where you can find like, oh well, this is a blue card that helps out humans. There's very rarely any deck that has that overlap of is blue and has humans. Right. So being able to have a card like this and slot in, like I think it's very good and very powerful, and it's just nice to be able to find homes for cards like this. Mass Appeal for those who don't know it yes. is, says, is a sorcery for two and a blue it says draw a card for each human you control careful don't deck yourself <laughs> uh it seems like you'll have a lot <laughs> yes so yeah, this card seems and cracked yeah. in this deck again with aowen you are making two tutus once you play a human yeah so if you have aowen whatever human you played and two tutus this is three mana draw four that's really good. If you cast, yeah, if you cast Eowyn ahead of Curve, let's say you just cast her on four. Yeah. And then next turn you play Deranged Assistant mm -hmm. and you make these two things. Now after combat, you cast Mass Appeal. You have five humans, right? Yeah. One, two, four. You have four, four humans. humans. 
I can do it. I, I can do it, Merv. It's like, I was never that good at math no, either. It's, you, 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 draw, you play three mana, you draw four cards. Because a, a one yeah. doesn't make you attack with these. Correct. If you're worried about them dying in combat, she doesn't... Yeah, you like, if you to. don't have good attacks, you can keep those two twos back. Yeah, no worries. Just leave them back, draw some cards. Draw four cards. And then next turn, you can play out another human or two. And then you'll and probably, hopefully, have better attacks at that point. Or you'll have, like, one of your mini, mini anthem draw effects. An anthem. And, Ugh. Yeah. So, so mass good. appeal, very, very good. Yeah. That's the other funny thing about this deranged assistant is with all of the, the anthem effects. I know, right? It could be the biggest deranged <laughs> assistant. <laughs> what if you just attack with the deranged assistant? <laughs> <laughs> is this Eowyn's assistant? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this next one's hilarious. I'm so glad you included yes. it. So <laughs> this is probably the biggest flavor fail. No, it's of not. The it's cool. the entire thing. No. It's Goldbug Humanity's Ally. The Transformer. It's, it's, it's Bumblebee. Um, <laughs> one, a white and a blue. Legendary artifact creature robots. Uh, it's got more than meets the eye. So on one side, uh, you can cast it transformed or you can cast it for its regular side. Uh, so on its normal side, uh, prevent all combat damage that would be dealt to attacking humans you control. Mm. And when you cast your second spell each turn, you convert it. I don't know why it's not transformed, but whatever. Um, and on the other side, it's an artifact vehicle. Human spells you control can't be countered. And whenever Goldbug and at least one other human attacks, draw a card and convert Goldbug. So these Transformers are pretty darn confusing as far as play patterns uh -huh. go. I hope uh, you're following that. Yes. <laughs> Jake has a Transformers deck and he just puts multiple on the battlefield. I'm like, and your brain just I have turns no off. Idea what you just, doing you just stop listening entirely. <laughs> but Perfect. usually what you want to do with Goldbug is you want to cast it converted mm -hmm. already. So you pay two mana for it. Yeah. Um, and then it's a vehicle uh, that can attack because it's got the living metal ability. So then it makes sure all your human spells can't be countered. Great. Very good. Uh, but also whenever it and something else attacks, you're able to draw a card. Um, and after it attacks, then it'll transform or convert, sorry. Um, and it'll prevent all damage that would be dealt to attacking humans you control. So not Huge. only are you deck. drawing cards, mm -hmm. you're able to attack basically with impunity. Yeah. Like it's Dolmen Gate or whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. yeah. Rose type of thing where you can just attack. And if it's not the best attack, who cares? Get through whatever damage you can. And you're drawing cards while doing it. Also, I want you to imagine. Okay. The Battle of Helm's Deep. <laughs> Things are looking rough. <laughs> and over the horizon. <laughs> That's my it's best Gandalf impression. on the back of Gulp. <laughs> it's, it's Gandalf in a yellow beetle. <laughs> Yeah, so for those who Gold want bug. to try to keep this deck at least Show us the meaning of haste. <laughs> thematically <laughs> on point, Goldbug is not a great include, but as far as functionality, I love it, it is wonderful. I know a lot of people complain about uh, the combining universes beyond, and I get it that when you look at your deck, you're like, <laughs> you're like what is this? <laughs> but it but can it, also be so funny. It's so funny. So funny. It's so funny. <laughs> and what is Commander if not being like, all right, Eowyn and... <laughs> <laughs> Gold, this, this Volkswagen Beetle <laughs> charging into battle and they like make a pretty good team <laughs> it's really good that's the funny part commander is all yeah. about having fun and doing goofy things and so I this this will do just that yeah I uh, I I really like this include a lot thank you thank you <laughs> when I saw it I was like <gasps> wait a minute <laughs> <laughs> all right uh, next up um we're past the draw points, so mm -hmm. the, we're going to talk about a bit of human synergy, mm -hmm. just more things that are able to like synergize with the commander because the commander clearly wants you to play humans. Mm -hmm. So why not include something like Adeline, a resplendent Cathar? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's one white, white vigilance. Uh, it's a legendary creature, human knight. Uh, it's power and toughness, or excuse me, just the power is equal to the number of creatures you control. And whenever you attack for each opponent, you make a 1-1 one, one human tapped and attacking each mm -hmm. of those things. So that's a lot of humans for not a lot of cost. Yeah. Adeline is a house in decks like yes. this. And the only reason it's not included in a precon is because she's got a name and it's not a Lord of the Rings name. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think this is definitely a card that's going into this deck yeah. immediately. There's a bit of, um, historic and legendary synergies in the deck as well. Mm -hmm. So something like Adeline is pulling, basically it's pulling double duty. It's doing a lot of duties all at once. Whoa. Adeline's doing duties <laughs> all at once. Rachel, we're not five. <laughs> I am. All. <laughs> Adeline is Whoa. a... 
Adeline is a little bit awkward in that you are making the humans when you're attacking. Yeah. So that's already past the point of when you need to make a human for Aowen to trigger. Mm. But I think that just the amount of humans that it's able to make is just totally worth its include. The other thing is that there is Baragond, which we said is one of the be- better cards in yes. the deck. There is a second Baragond, basically, yes. that says whenever a human enters, uh, your humans get plus one, plus oh. Mm-hmm. Uh, and having three enter at the same time is an enormous buff. Yes. Uh, so I, I think just the sheer amount of humans entering the battlefield is very powerful. Yes. And we like anthems, so let's add more anthems. Do it. <laughs> Eleven is too few. Yeah. So this one is Copper Coat Vanguard. It's one in a white. Each other human you control gets plus one, plus oh, and has ward one. And it's a two-two human. Mm -hmm. So this card does so much in the deck. Mm -hmm. Like you said earlier, cheap humans are very, very useful in this deck. Because once you have Aowen out, you want to be able to try to play another human. Uh, Ideally that turn, maybe not. uh, But you want to be able to play a couple things and squeeze a human into whatever you're playing, whatever you're doing. Um, So this, for two mana, does a lot. It buffs your entire team. Again, the tokens have trample mm-hmm. um, from Aowen. So yeah, it also gives Ward one to everything. Ward is so good, yeah, in Commander. It's because a lot of people will hold up one mana for mm-hmm. their swords to plowshares, right? Exactly. And then they find out that they can't swords what they want right now mm-hmm. without it being countered. Yes. So instead of waiting until they have the mana to swords it and pay the ward, a lot of the time players just go elsewhere because yeah. they don't want to waste this one open mana. Yeah, ward, so they'll sword something without ward. Ward is so sneaky powerful because yeah. like like you said, every single time I run up against ward, I'm like, oh, I want to get rid of that thing. But it has ward one or ward two or whatever it might be. I don't want to pay four for a beast within. Exactly. Like, yeah. that just feels so much worse. I don't know why it feels so much worse, but it really does. And so being able to have commander protection as well as buffing your entire army for two mana, like, that is just way too good to pass up. Yeah, this is great. Oh, and this next one's so good. Yeah. It's sneaky. Sneaky. Awesome. Yep. Very clever. Thank you. Uh, so this one is Reinforced Ronin. Uh, it's a red. It's an artifact creature, human samurai. It's got haste. At the beginning of your end step, return Reinforced Ronin to its owner's hand. Uh, it's a 2-2, and you can channel it to basically just cycle it. Uh, one in a red, discard it, draw a card. Mm-hmm. So this card is really good because you can play a human every single turn for the rest of the game. <laughs> red human. <laughs> red human. It's it's so solid. Exactly. I mean, especially with like Kindred Discovery type cards where you're, yes. you're, you have these human triggers. You want mm-hmm. human ETB triggers. Yes. So it's great with a- a- Aowen, obviously, but it's also great with Baragond and all of these other things that are whenever a human enters the battlefield, something happens. Mm-hmm. It's great. Yeah, so for oh. one red mana, you're just able to trigger Aowen, everything in your deck. Um, and if for whatever reason you think, man, I just don't have anything, you can still just cycle it and draw another card. If worst comes to worst, you're probably not doing that super often because this card is so good in this deck. Yeah, I love But it. you can do that if you want to. Why not? You can do it if you want to. <laughs> we, we can leave your friends behind. <laughs> is that what you're going for? He does. <laughs> yeah. over, and over, over and over and over and over again. and over again. <laughs> Leaves his friends on the battlefield. It's like, see ya. <laughs> All right, this next category is for closing out the game, making sure that we have enough damage to actually uh, take out my, take out your opponents. Yeah, so there were a couple things in here. Um, first up is a very interesting one. Mm-hmm. It's Breath of Fury. So it's two red and red. Uh, you can enchant a creature you control. It's an aura. Uh, whenever enchanted creature deals combat damage to a player, sacrifice it and attach Breath of Fury to a creature you control. If you do untap all creatures you control... And after this phase, there's an additional combat phase. So, the important part about this is that Aowen makes two twos at the beginning of combat. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it's two of them. So, as long as you have a way to get through damage without somebody being able to get uh, your token dead, you can basically have infinite combats. Yeah. If your opponents are F6, this is is fantastic. Fully infinite combats. I love it so yep. much. So if one person, uh, say one person has no blockers, uh, then you can attach this to one of your creatures, one of the creatures that doesn't matter, sacrifice it, attach it to one of your tutus. Attack with a single tutu, sacrifice it, you'll make two more tutus. Attach it to a new tutu, sacrifice that, you'll make another tutu, and so on and so forth until you have as many creatures as you could want or need. Uh, you'll probably end up killing that person, uh, but at that point you'll probably have like, uh, let's see, so two... 
Do, do, do. So 20 attacks for somebody who's at 40. So then you'll have 20 more 2-2s, two which should be pretty darn close to being able to take out the other I, players. <laughs> I think at so. that point, you're probably <laughs> doing okay. Your commander also is a 5-4 with first strike. <laughs> yeah, that's also pretty good. <laughs> so you, you can use other things to like start chipping away at other players, blockers or whatever mm -hmm. it might be. Basically, as long as you can get through damage, Breath of Fury probably means you win the game. Yeah, five bucks well spent on Breath of Fury. And if Infinite Combats doesn't do the trick, this next one always does. Yeah, so this deck has lots of anthems, lots of tokens, lots of ways to attack and deal damage. But I, I felt like, well, what a, this deck just kind of folds to Ghostly Prison. Like, mm -hmm. what do you do? <laughs> uh, so next up is Impact Tremors. Mm -hmm. uh, classic, one in a red, enchantment, whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control. Impact Tremors deals one damage to each opponent. Uh, this deck does make a decent amount of tokens. It's just making a decent amount of creatures in general. So that damage can very, very easily add up um, over the course of not even a couple turns, like... I can very easily see this doing like 10, 15 damage to everybody over the course of like two turns or something like that. Yeah, there's a, a number of cards in the deck that make a huge amount of tokens all at once. Um, and Impact Tremors is interesting because it is extremely scary if it, even if it only does like three or four damage in one turn. Yeah. So you really save Impact Tremors for those big turns yes. where you're going to you're gonna play Impact Tremors and you're going to follow it up with a token card or you're going to follow it up with AoN making two tokens and then you have an Adeline as well. Or you could just run it out and hope for the best. And hope it doesn't get removed. Yep. That too. I've definitely done that. <laughs> also, then their enchantment removal is gone for when you cast Breath of Fury. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That's run them the out. reason. <laughs> run them out. All right. Uh, Impact Tremors is down to $3.50 after its uh, most recent reprint, which brings the total value of this upgrade to 40 bucks yeah. on the nose. Saved them $10, Murph. $10. Yeah, I, I feel like there were just enough like budget includes yeah. in here that we didn't really have to hit the $50 limits. Um, mm. Take that $10, buy a couple booster packs, yeah. whatever you want. Enjoy Maybe yourself. Maybe open have the fun. ring. Yeah, well, or the Rick's booster packs are a little more expensive, so you can yeah, only do like two booster packs with the $10. Either way, yeah, have fun with it. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy it. Yeah. That's for you to take home. So uh, for this $50 budget, we understand that that's a big budget, but we still wanted to give you some options if you want to, you know, if you want to splurge. Yeah. If you want to have a big day out. If you're really excited about Eowyn or Aragorn and you want to like actually invest some real money in this deck. Mm -hmm. And there's a very good one. Yeah, it's Rick Steadfast Leader. Once again... Not great on flavor, but very, very, very good card. <laughs> it's the two white whites, does lots of stuff with humans. Very, very, very good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it, it's the best human anthem yes. in the game for sure. Yeah. The deck doesn't particularly need more anthems, but this one's just so dang good. It's a yeah. complete house. It's a it's, human niven of itself. They have also promised that there's going to be a reprint of the um, uh, Walking Dead Ooh. cards okay. that are in universe. Okay. That like that's a thing that got announced, and uh, they'll do that. I'm trying to remember what set they come out in. I'm sure the editors will put it on screen. But yes, it would or be don't. very exciting to have an in-universe Rick who will hopefully bring this price tag down because currently Rick is over fifty bucks. <laughs> Whoever's editing this is like, ah, oh, now I have to go get the thing. Thank <laughs> you. Just because Rachel said so. Uh, Please. You're awesome. See, editors. that's my trick. <laughs> <laughs> I know because I used to edit the podcast, and I'm like, wow. Why did Jimmy say that? <laughs> a trick for you. Uh, another one that uh, I don't have listed here, mm -hmm. uh, which isn't necessarily a splurge card because I have absolutely no idea uh, how expensive it's going to be, mm -hmm. but Horn of Gondor from this set it's so good. is so good in this deck. I can't believe it's not in this deck. Yeah, that's super interesting to me. I feel like it's for power level. Like it's Maybe. gotta be yeah. because that card is so nuts because it comes in, makes a one, one, mm -hmm. and then you can double all of your humans from then on out. Um, yeah. That's a great one. Yeah. It's, um, it's just insane. Yeah. Hard to say how expensive it's going to be because it is, yeah. it is like a specifically a human card, but it's very powerful and it should be slammed into this deck. Yes. Very, it's very strange. Yeah. If you're just it. like opening packs and you see that like in your pre-release and you end up picking up this uh, commander deck, be like, yes, in that goes, slam it in there, psh, enjoy yourself, have a good time. Yeah. Uh, just 
absolutely murdering all of your opponents. Oh, right. We've added 10 cards to the deck, which means we have to do the hardest thing in Commander, which is make cuts. Uh, 10 cards have to come out so we can have a legal Commander deck. Uh, let's go through them. Yeah. So this deck, honestly, out of the box, plays pretty good. Um, yeah. It's pretty solid. So we're just going to be like cleaning up a few of the things that like don't quite cut it as far as power level or as far as themes for the deck. Mm -hmm. So first up, we've got Grey Host Reinforcements. It's a newer card, three and a white. Uh, it's got flying and ward three. Uh, whenever it enters the battlefield, exile target player's graveyard. Put a number of plus one, plus one counters on it equal to the number of creature cards exiled this way. And it's a one, one. So this feels like this was one of the cards that was included just to give some form of evasion to the deck. Yeah, worth noting, this is a spirit soldier. Yes, it is not, it a, is not human. a human. So it's not triggering any of your stuff. It's four mana, and it's only getting plus one, plus one counters for creatures exiled. So it's not that great of a card. It's a little slow. Doesn't really synergize with the rest of your deck. We're cutting it. Yep. Uh, next up, similarly along these lines, Dearly Departed, uh, four white, white. Uh, it's a spirit with flying. Uh, if it's in your graveyard, each human creature you control enters the battlefield with an additional plus one, plus one counter on it. Uh, there's no good way, really, other than play it out and it dies to get this creature in your graveyard. Uh, except now the newly added deranged assistant. <laughs> ah, no. You get very lucky with Mill. <laughs> uh, yeah, but honestly, having every human enter with one more plus one plus one counter, we got plenty of anthems in the deck. Just play one of those instead. You don't need to pay six mana, hope this goes to the graveyard, and then play your humans out. And only then will they get the plus one plus one counters. It's, yeah. it's slow, it's sluggish. Yeah, not great. Uh, Harsh Mentor, one in a red. This one is a human. It's a human cleric. Whenever an opponent activates an ability of an artifact, creature, or land on the battlefield, if it isn't a mana ability, Harsh Mentor deals two damage to that player. It's a 2-2. Two -two. Uh, yeah, Harsh Mentor. It's a fun, good card, just not in Commander. Yeah, this is this is the kind of thing that you think is going to trigger a whole lot more, yeah. and uh, it doesn't. And if it is going to hurt somebody, they're going to answer it because mm -hmm. it's 2-2 two, two human. Yeah. Because, uh, so it tends to kind of fold. Yeah, because it gives your opponent's uh, choice of whether to activate said ability. Mm -hmm. um, if they have life to spare, they'll activate it and no harm, no foul. Uh, if they are low on life, then they just won't activate the ability and this won't do any damage. Um, it could lock them out of an ability maybe if they're low enough, but at that point, uh, I don't know. Hit them. Hit them with yeah, something bigger. Uh, <laughs> I feel like Harshmander <laughs> just doesn't quite cut it. Yeah. Next up, Champions of Minas Tirith, five and a white. Uh, this one's interesting. We'll talk about it in just a moment. Mm -hmm. It's a human soldier. It enters the battlefield and you become the monarch. At the beginning of combat on each opponent's turns, if you're the monarch, that opponent may pay X, where X is the number of cards in their hand. If they don't, they can attack you. Or if they don't, they can't attack you. Excuse me. This combat. I mean, this card's very powerful. Yeah. So this card is like ghostly prison type stuff, like on steroids. Like it's really good. Yeah. At keeping you protected. Yeah. It, you have to protect the monarch, but. Yeah. I talked with you a little bit about this earlier. You were like, it's, it's why those, are you cutting this? It's one, of, it's one of those cards that you look at in, it's one of the new cards yes. that you look at and you're like, wow. That's what? really good. Yeah. And But the thing is, we're not cutting it because it's a bad card. Yes. You're cutting it because it's not at home in an aggro deck. Mm -hmm. Which this deck very much wants to be. Like, your top end should be Eowyn. Like, right. you shouldn't really need to be going past that. And at six mana, like, it is a human, but you probably want to be making multiple humans, if you can. Uh, try to go as wide as possible. And yeah, this will protect you and keep you safe more often than not but at six mana it's just a tall order for an aggressive deck yeah i agree it's yeah. super sweet in a control deck any deck that can protect the monarch i think we're gonna see a lot of this card but it's uh probably more at home with aragorn yeah there, so. yeah i think you can take this out of this deck put in another one of your decks and be much happier with it yeah all right um next up denethor Stone Seer, one in a blue, a uh, legendary creature. When it enters the battlefield, scry two, three in a red, sacrifice Denethor. Target player becomes the monarch, and Denethor deals three damage to any target. And it's a one three. Uh, Denethor, honestly, th this just kind of goes to show how well built this deck is. Because honestly, most of the time, I would not be cutting cards like this, where mm -hmm. it's lower to the ground, and it's two mana, so it's pretty low cost in order to play it. Um, and it does something like it scries, sets up your next draws and can do a little bit of damage, 
but I just don't feel like it does what the deck wants. It's a little slow. Yeah. If it I, was like scry and then draw or something, then I would feel a lot better about that. It does sort of, but it's scry yeah. and then draw the turn you activate it. Yeah. And th the problem is... Basically, because you make yourself the monarch. Yeah. It's no longer a you pay two mana and then you're feeling good about it. It's you're paying six mana for all those abilities. Uh, yeah. Right. You can split it up over turns. Or, uh, you have to split it up over mm -hmm. turns because you got to tap to do it. But that just feels a lot worse Again, yeah. it's not the worst card in the world. It just is not playing into what this deck wants to do. If you are yeah. spending four mana to make yourself the monarch and lightning bolt something, um, you, you are not feeling good. <laughs> like, I don't know about you, Rachel. Yeah. That is not what I want to be doing in this deck. I agree. I think this is more of the monarch version of this deck, as is this, as is this next one. Yes. Plus, Denethor is not that great of a guy. Yeah, get him out of there. Get, get him out of the here. Now. He, like... We only want good cool humans in this I deck. I love that he deals three damage to any target when yeah. he actually does three, day, three damage to himself. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. But he does sacrifice himself, so That's we got that. True. He does die. I like that flavor. Uh, yeah. So next up, Court of Ire. It's three red red enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, you become the monarch. At the beginning of your upkeep, Court of Ire deals two damage to any target. And if you're the monarch, it deals seven damage instead. So... Five's a lot. Yeah, this definitely feels like it belongs more in, if you want to build an Aragorn deck, mm -hmm. uh, this type of card, type of effect, feels like it's a lot more at home there. But as it stands, once again, if you're trying to make a aggressive deck, you don't want to be dropping a five mana enchantment and turtling up and trying to stay the monarch. Yeah, Like that is sure. pretty antithetical to what the deck wants to be doing. I agree completely. All right, call for aid. This card, almost really cool. Four and a red, sorcery. Gain control of all creatures target opponent controls until end of turn. Untap those creatures. They gain haste. You can't attack that player this turn. And then... And you can't sack him. You can't sack him. Uh, if it didn't have those so last cool, couple of lines though. of text... It's so close. Uh, it's so close. If it didn't have, like, maybe even just one of those last lines of text wasn't there, I'd feel a lot better about this card. This is the card I'm actually very curious to see in a game, because yeah. I think it's the, the kind of card that you look at and you can picture it being great. Yeah. And and maybe it's not, and maybe it is. It, it, it's really going to depend on how aggressive your playgroup is. Mm -hmm. Um. If your playgroup doesn't play aggro decks, yep. it's quite bad. Um, I mean, you can just take all their stuff and just ram it into somebody like, else and hope that they have yeah. bad blocks. But yeah. uh, I don't know. For five mana, like you not being able to attack the player that you just left open. Oh, yeah. It's like, dead. It's so bad. It's dead if there's only one player left. Oh, yeah. That's also true. <laughs> well, that's not true. It takes all their blockers. Yeah, but you, but you, you can attack them with your stuff. You, you can't attack that player this turn. You can't attack them you at all? You can't attack this player this turn. It's pretty dead. I don't yeah, like, yeah. I don't like this card. If there's only <laughs> one... And the thing about aggro decks is you don't tend to take the ta whole table out yeah. at the same time, especially in Jeskai aggro decks. In green aggro decks, you do. Yeah. But in, in decks like this, you tend to take out like one or two players and then you finish off the last person. So there is a period of time where mm -hmm. Call for Eight is completely dead. Yeah. So it, I, I just don't feel like it's that good of a card. You'll often find it rotting in your hand. Uh, so... Out it goes. Mm. Uh, next up, Fealty to the Realm. It's four and a blue. Uh, I kind of like this card, actually. It's an mm. aura. You enchant a creature. When it enters the battlefield, you become the monarch. The monarch controls enchanted creature. An enchanted creature attacks each combat if able and can't attack you. So, again, this one more plays into the uh, Aragorn side of things, where you're trying to become the monarch and stay the monarch. Uh, but as a result, you just kind of need to have defenses for this to work. Uh, and with... AON as an aggressive deck. You're probably not going to have that super often, maybe a couple tokens, but yeah, not exactly what this deck wants to be doing. Yeah, this is more back foot card. It, yeah. it also feels very political yeah. where you, this you can put on a, on a creature and you make the monarch better. Mm -hmm. You're like, oh, if so now the monarch isn't just a card on your end step. You also gain control of like that Nyx Blume Agent yes. or that Consecrated Sphinx or something. So it really forces people into battle a little bit more. Yeah. Again, like the card. Just don't think it belongs little weird in here, yeah. the Aowen deck specifically. Mm -hmm. uh, these last two are pretty similar. Uh, increasing devotion. 
and Visions of Glory. Yep. Uh, they just kind of make like a mass amount of humans. They both do it for about five mana and they can be flashbacked uh, for a larger-ish amount of mana. Yeah, nine mana increasing vo- yeah. devotions uh, case and Visions of Glory will cost five with the reduction from, from yeah. AO and But you make a 1-1 one, one for each uh, creature you control for Visions of Glory, whereas you just make a static five for increasing devotion. I really don't like Visions of Glory as a magic. Yeah. Card. It's so win more. If you don't have yeah. a board, this card does nothing. Yeah. And if you have a five mana sorcery and it doesn't do anything. <laughs> yeah. The flashback feels like, oh, well, this could be good because of AON because of the fact that you're making those two twos quite easily. Mm-hmm. Um, and it would be only be five mana to be able to flashback it. But like you said, these feel a lot win more because, again, this deck, I don't think wants to say five mana make say let's just go with increase in devotion five one ones maybe attack maybe, yeah you probably because, make the two yeah from, you, you make the two two twos yeah but those one ones aren't really doing much for you because they can maybe do something for you next turn but i feel like this deck does a lot better of like all right let me play this two mana creature let me play this three mana creature that comes in with another one one or something like that mm-hmm. and building your board that way instead of trying to take all of it make five one ones that just don't really do anything for you right then and there yeah it also lowers your curve significantly these are these are expensive cards yeah and flashing back like increasing devotion for nine is a lot yeah you're very rarely going to get to nine you can i'm not saying you can't yeah especially if if you're doing like a pre-con off but it's it's interesting because we talked about the horn of gondor being so powerful and i think the the big difference between these cards and horn of gondor is Horn of Gondor is instant speed, mm-hmm. right? So yep. you can do it whenever. And I know that there's always the threat of activation, but it's like this gives you a little bit more flexibility into terms of when you commit to the board. Yeah. And like Horn uh, of and Gondor. when you use your mana. Yeah. Horn of Gondor does the thing where it just comes in with a 1 1 naturally. Yeah. It so just it'll always have that 1 1 trigger your commander. And then at that point, then you can just sit on it, hold it up, um, activate it on somebody's end step, goes to your turn. And then you're good to attack. Yeah. So uh, something like that, I feel, is much better in this slot of trying to make a lot of humans uh, than Mm -hmm. either of these cards. Yeah. Uh, All right. We've talked about what to add, what to take away. What is left? What What do you imagine the play pattern of this deck looking like? Yeah. So this deck is a little bit interesting because you don't want to throw down all of your cards specifically on curve. You definitely want to make sure that you have at least a human, maybe more, still in hand by the time you cast your commander. Because uh, the worst thing that you can possibly do in this deck is spell out your hand, cast your commander, don't have any humans mm-hmm. in your hand, because then your commander's doing nothing. Yeah, now it's a 5 4 first strike. Exactly. And there are definitely some cards that you'll probably want to play a little bit earlier on. Just make sure that you have something back in reserves so that you can get your commander's engine going. And at that point, you should be able to get the draw engine online for AON, and you'll be feeling a lot less bad about possibly not having any humans. Hopefully, it'll draw into some more. Yeah. But at that point, you're off to the races. You'll probably have a big board. Yeah. Be scary. Early ramp pieces, a little bit of anthem type things, like yeah. the two mana 2-2 two, two with the anthem, and then you get your commander down and really start doing mm-hmm. some damage. I love it. Uh, I am super excited about this deck, honestly. it's oh, one I love of, this deck. It's, I, it's one of the pre-cons I'm most excited about, just mm-hmm. to play out of the box. Oh, so um, so to the listeners, what do you think of the Riders of, Rehan, Ro, the Riders of Rohan pre-con? Uh, any cards that we missed that you were like, uh, you ding-dongs, add that. Uh, any cards we suggested to take out or add that you disagree with? We're excited to hear when you're excited about this deck. So when you have passionate opinions about how it should be upgraded, it's exciting. And it's fun to talk about magic cards with you. So mm-hmm. get in the comments. Tell us what you think. We hope you enjoy the deck and the upgrade. If you are going to buy any of these cards that we talked about today, go to cardkingdom.com slash command and pick them up from the card retailer that we trust. When I'm building a new deck, especially, I like to go to Card Kingdom and pick up a huge order all at once. So I know that when it arrives in the mail, I can sleeve it up and get playing. Plus, they have a great selection of sealed product, a ton of ways to buy Lord of the Rings set. There's the precons and there's set boosters and there's collector boosters. There's tons. Go to Card Kingdom and buy your Lord of the Rings product. I hope you're as excited as we are because it's... <laughs> I can't wait to draft this. I, I want to draft this. Oh my God. Buy a bunch of commander decks and then draft it. And I'm we're gonna be so happy. buying the precons. Yeah. I'm <laughs> sleeving them up and I'm mm-hmm. putting them in a chest and I'm carrying <laughs> them around with me and it's the only way I'm playing commander for about a year. 
<laughs> uh, and I'm picking up those pre-cons at cardkingdom.com slash command. And I'm sleeving them up after visiting ultrapro.com. <laughs> that was the greatest command. segue you've ever Thank done. You. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> Ultra Pro has some of the best magic accessories in the business. High quality, and it has the official licensed magic and Middle Earth entertainment art. Um, this is one of the biggest art sets that they have done in years. Mm -hmm. They have all new art on all of the pre-cons. They have all new art on this whole set. And they've got the play mats and the deck boxes and the sleeves to match at Ultra Pro. Plus, they've had just great high quality products for organizing your collection. When you buy a whole bunch of cards, you can put them in binders that you know they're going to be safe. I love Ultra Pro products, especially the satin cubes are my favorite way to my store my decks. So support the show and support your cards. Protect them at ultrapro.com slash command. Uh, all right, we're going to move to the end step. We're going to talk about something outside of the world of magic. What have you been playing lately, Murph? What have you been thinking about? What have you been enjoying? Um, recently, I have been, I wouldn't fully say getting into, but somewhat getting into, uh, records. Mm. So I bought my younger sister, who is a musician, she lives with me now, uh, Audio Technica AT60, I think it is, record player a while ago. Um, and hasn't really been used a ton. Uh, so we finally decided, hey, let's set it up, bust it out, and see what this thing can do. So record players are completely analog. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. they're pretty darn finicky. So I pulled it out. I started, I put a record on, um, and then it did not sound quite right. And I'm like, why doesn't it sound right? Is there like, do I have it on the 45 setting when it should mm -hmm. be 33? Like what's going on? Yeah. And so I, I messed with it a little bit. I eventually downloaded something on my phone where you can uh, get an app, put it on the tray table and it tells you how fast the tray table is spinning using the accelerometer. Whoa. So it turns out that the tray table was spinning 34.7 RPMs instead of 33 and a third that it should have been. So everything was slightly too fast right. and slightly pitched off. I'm like, okay. So we can fix this. Yeah. So I, I went in and I, it was like a little bit at the bottom um, that you can put a little tiny screwdriver in. Didn't have a tiny screwdriver. I had to go to Home Depot, find a little tiny screwdriver so that I could adjust you, the little thing. You went to Home Depot to buy just a tiny screwdriver? Yes. It was very comedic. <laughs> I was and like, I have... <laughs> should I just buy snacks or something nope. to go with this? Nope. Just tiny screwdriver. <laughs> So finally, Wait, did you get a bag? No, <laughs> <laughs> just took a tiny screwdriver. Okay, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so then it's very like minute uh, tweaks in order to get it, but eventually got it dialed in. And analog video, not video, analog audio is just so bizarre yeah. because it doesn't have to be like plugged into anything. The speakers don't have to be on, and if you just get your ear close enough, you can hear it. And that's weird. <laughs> that's so bizarre to me. I don't know about you. <laughs> I haven't spent a ton of time. Like my old roommate loved records and mm -hmm. played records a lot. And it was beautiful. It felt like the house really hummed. Yeah. Like you can feel the sound feels bigger. Yeah. I like the intentionality of records yeah. where you're like, I'm going to listen to an album. You get it out. You put it on. It's like watching start, a movie. Put the on. Yeah. It's more of an event yes. when you when you put it on. Yeah. On you got to stop. Player. Flip it over. Yeah. Play again. <laughs> it's, you know, you, there's stuff in old movies where people yeah. are like, I'm having people over to listen to records. Yeah. You're like, what? <laughs> yep. Yeah. The biggest, That's all you're doing? The biggest downside is they get dirty and the needle will sometimes skip grooves. Care, you have to care for them. You have to take care of them. Extremely carefully. Yeah. But, otherwise, like, it'll, they'll damage the records themselves right. if it skips too much. Yeah. But... But it's it's worth it. I mean, it changes your experience, your music experience entirely. Yeah. I don't know if I would say that it's worth it, but it is a fun thing to have and a fun thing to bust out from time to time. Yeah. So I, I've been enjoying it. All you youngins, <laughs> ask, ask about records. They're cool. They're very fun. Uh, okay, all of this is completely impossible without our amazing team here at the Command Zone. So we're going to say a quick thank you to Craig Lanchette, Damon Lentz, Arthur Meadowcroft, Lady Danger, Manson Lung, Jake Boss, Jordan Pridgen, Sam Waldo, Grav Gladi, Jamie Black, Mitch Trafford, Evan Limburger, Gabriel Pozos, Megan Yep, Eric Clem, Charlie Quiet, and Jimmy Wong. <sighs> That's a lot of people. 
but they're all awesome. Also Thank to you, Josh Murphy for doing this upgrade and uh, finding some cool humans. And for taking the time. Thank you to Rachel for being awesome on these podcasts. <laughs> Rachel, the podcasts have thanks. been so awesome since you've joined. I just, thanks. I just want to say oh, thank you. Fun. And I know the audience is like, oh man, I, I just love that Rachel's on. Like every comment, uh, <laughs> like the top comment of every podcast video is like, Rachel's just the best. And I'm like, yes, like that comment, like that <laughs> comment. <laughs> Well, say, good, it's you and me like in all of those we're, yeah, like, we're just making burner accounts we're like ooh that's nice <laughs> that feels good yeah thanks for listening everybody and we'll see you next time bye bye For further inquiries, send an email to commandcast at rocketjump.com or ask us on Twitter at JF Wong and at Josh Lee Kwai. See you later, alligator. Greetings, humans. <laughs>